Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be installing one of the most popular desktop Linux distributions out there. Uh, that Linux distribution is OpenSUSE. In particular I'm going to be installing OpenSUSE Tumbleweed which is their rolling release model. If you go to OpenSUSE.org, their webpage, you will see that OpenSUSE has two editions. They have Tumbleweed which is their rolling release edition. They claim it is fast, integrated, stabilized, and tested. A rolling release model that is stable. They all claim that. Uh, we'll see. Uh, they also have their Leap edition, which is their really stable edition. This is their regular release version. That's the one that I recommend most users run. If you're not sure which one to run, Leap is probably the one you want to install. Today I'm going to be installing Tumbleweed though. I want to do the rolling release uh, version of it. I've never installed Tumbleweed, so I want to check it out, see what it's all about. So let's get started. So I'm going to be installing this inside VirtualBox. So I've downloaded the ISO and we're just going to run through the installation here. Uh, VirtualBox wants to capture my keyboard and mouse. Okay, in this menu I have the options boot from hard disk, installation, upgrade and then more. The boot from hard disk I'm assuming probably boots us into a live environment that we could test out. I'm just going to go ahead and run through the installation. Alright, looks like the installer is finally going to load. That took a few seconds. Uh, I paused the video a couple of times there. And we're still waiting for their graphical installer to launch here. Okay. And it is finally loaded up here. Alright, the first thing we have to do is set language settings. They've already chosen English US. That's correct. Keyboard layout has also been chosen English US. That's correct. I have a license agreement here that I guess I should read. A EULA location in the installed, okay. Some kind of license they want me to agree to, yeah, sure, why not. <clears throat> not going to take the time to read the license on this video. Alright. Suggested partitioning. Okay, looks like they're going to create SDA1, 2 gigs, SDA2, 10 gigs, and then 3 gigs on SDA3. Uh, looks like they're going to do ButterFS for my main partition. You know what, I'm just going to let it do the default. I don't want to run through the manual partitioning, so I'm fine with these settings. Alright, time zone. It has chosen the eastern time zone in the U.S. for me. That is incorrect. I need the central time zone. All right, please select a desktop or a user interface. Okay, so this is the desktop environment we want. Our options are KDE Plasma or GNOME. Uh, I believe KDE is the uh, it's kind of like the flagship OpenSUSE uh, desktop. That's the one I think most people go with. So I'm going to go with that one. All right, we need to create a user uh, to keep things simple. I'm just going to do OpenSUSE. That way I remember the usernames for all these virtual machines that I have. I always know that it's the name of the distro. Alright. Click Next. The password is too simple. It does not contain enough different characters. Okay, I hate it when these distros ask me, do I really want to use my simple password? Yes. I get, you know, they want to be sure that I'm not just some idiot, you know, but you know, it's a virtual machine. It's not like, you know, this is some web server or email server or something. Anyway, moving on. Installation settings. Uh, basically telling me what it's about to install on the system. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm just gonna confirm everything. I'm just gonna Everything that comes up, I'm going to click OK. This is one of those kind of installers anyway. If you've ever installed something like Ubuntu or Mint or 
you know, any of these user-friendly distros, for the most part, you just click OK three or four times and you're done. The only thing that you might have to do is depending on uh, whether you're dual booting alongside another operating system such as Windows or another Linux distro, you may have to set up some partitions, which I didn't bother with. I'm going to give uh, OpenSUSE of the entire hard drive of this virtual machine. I'm going to pause the video for a couple of minutes while the installer runs. Okay, so it finished installing and then it quickly rebooted itself. It gave me like a 10 second window where it was going to reboot the machine or I could stop it. I didn't catch it in time, but uh, I like that uh, after the installation, you always have to reboot the machine anyway. I like that it went ahead and you know, basically did it on its own. It didn't uh, ask you did you want to reboot and it didn't put the uh, reboot or restart now button you know in some weird place that a user might not notice it so uh, good job on that open Susa. all right and we're still waiting for the system to load all right it looks like well uh, it uh, loaded straight into KDE. We didn't go to a login manager. You know, I might have chosen to log in automatically during the installer. It was probably preset to log in automatically. I usually don't like doing that. I'll probably unset that off camera. But anyway, uh, let's see what OpenSUSE Tumbleweed KDE is all about. I noticed when I downloaded the ISO that the image was was really big. It was like 4.7 gigs. So I'm guessing they included a full suite of software. Now I, I bet it's pretty loaded down with some programs on it, which I'm fine with. So uh, I'm going to go through the menu here and see what is installed. Under the games menu, we have a couple of board games a card game, it looks like Patience, uh, Logic Games, we have Mines and Sudo Sudoku. Under the Graphics category we have GIMP, love GIMP. I'm glad they installed that by default too. A lot of distros leave GIMP out and I think it's a valuable program that needs to be installed by default on every Linux distro. Gwynview, Hugen Batch Processor, Hugen Calibrate Lens, Hugen Panorama Creator, I'm not exactly sure what the Hugen programs are. Never heard of that particular suite of programs. LibreOffice Draw, Ocular, and Scanlight. Ocular is, I believe, the uh, image viewer in KDE. Scanlight is a uh, scanning program. So, continuing on through the menu. Internet. Aggregator. We have Firefox as our default browser. I love Firefox. Kmail, which is a mail client, Knet Attach, we have the Conversation uh, IRC client, KTNEF, not sure exactly what KTNEF is. Uh, why don't we go to their about page? It is a viewer for mail attachments using the TNEF format. Hmm, okay. Again, we have a, a ton of software included by default. Some of these uh, programs I've, I've never heard of, but the KDE desktop environment, uh, they develop a, a ton of KDE programs. I mean, a lot more than what most people install when they uh, do their KDE version of, of their distros. But it looks like OpenSUSE has given us everything. They're giving us the kitchen sink here. We have the PIM setting exporter, the uh, Civ Editor, Tiger VNC Viewer under Multimedia, Dragon Player, and K3B. K3B is great dis uh, disc burning utility. Dragon Player is the video player. All right, moving on. Office. We have K Address. We have K Mail. We have Contact. K Organizer. Again all these KDE uh, programs, the, the part of the KDE uh, desktop environment. Also under Office we have the entire LibreOffice suite. I think that's fantastic. 
uh, and then some other programs we've already seen in other categories, Ocular, PIM Settings Exporter, and the uh, Civ Editor. Under Settings, well, that menu is, was not wanting to load. Some graphical glitches here inside VirtualBox. That's to be expected. Uh, configure Desktop, um, Control Panel, Policy Editor, Yast. Let me open up Yast. It's going to ask for my password. All right, so this is uh, basically a graphical uh, package installer, a software center of sorts. So I just wanted to check this out. Uh, it looks very intuitive. Categories on the side, has a search bar. And so not much to see here. I'm not going to install anything on this video because by default, uh, I don't need to install much on this system. There's quite a bit already installed. Under system, we have ARC, which is the uh, archive manager, you know, for zip and unzip. Dolphin, which is the file manager. I love the Dolphin file manager. It is probably the single greatest thing about KDE, in my opinion, is the Dolphin file manager. Uh, it, it's just outstanding. I mean, it makes uh, GNOME's file manager just look like trash. It really does. Dolphin is great. Uh, back to system, we also have Info Center, Install Remove Software, which again I think is just linked to the YAST program. Yeah, it's YAST again. Uh, different interface to it. This is YAST 2. Kind of reminds me of the old uh, Synaptic Package Manager. For those familiar with, with that, not too many distros use Synaptic anymore. All right, back to system, we have the console, console with a K. This is KDE's uh, terminal, which is a, a great terminal for those that enjoy using a terminal. And then under utilities, we have ARC again. We have Kate, which is the KDE text editor, the plain text editor which is a, a, a nice little text editor. I quite like uh, Kate. It's a really nice program. We have Calculator, Character Selector, Color Chooser. We have a, a Note Taking App, uh, Power Session. This is just how to uh, reboot your machine, log out, shut down the system. So that's most everything here. I'm going to uh, click Configure Desktop here just to play around for a second. So let's see what themes are installed on OpenSUSE by default. All right, it looks like we have the OpenSUSE theme, which is what the default theme here, which is actually quite attractive. Uh, the taskbar looks good. The window manager here looks good. I like the icon theme. Uh, looks good. In, uh, other themes available, we have the breeze theme here which I like the breeze theme too. It's it's a sharp looking theme. Uh, the breeze dark theme is a really really nice dark theme. I quite like it. I, th I think it's a very modern looking theme. But if I was going to use such a dark theme I would need to change the wallpaper. The wallpaper needs to be a light wallpaper if you're going to use you know, dark windows and taskbars. So let's see what kind of wallpaper uh, we have available here. So let me get out of this. I'm going to right click, configure desktop. Okay, you know, considering how much software they installed by default, I actually expected OpenSUSE to come with a pretty good uh, collection of wallpapers by default. This is actually kind of disappointing you only have two wallpapers uh, the default one here this bluish green that's really dark or this purple one here let me see how that goes with the breeze dark window theme yeah you know I, I think that mesh as well I'm gonna keep that so all in all uh, yeah I, it, it's what you would expect OpenSUSE to be very fast install uh, 
you know, a professional looking desktop environment, super slick, uh, very polished, uh, a complete system. You know, these very large distros like OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, Fedora that have very large communities and large corporate backing, you know, you never have to wonder uh, about their installation, how it's going to go, is it going to be a complete train wreck, uh, is the system going to be stable after you install it, if you have breakages, are you going to be able to get support for it, you, you know what you're getting when you install distros like OpenSUSE. But I've never installed the Tumbleweed edition. This is the rolling release model of OpenSUSE. Now I expect OpenSUSE's rolling release model to be different than something like Arch or certainly something like Gentoo. I don't think it's going to be so bleeding edge that you know, you're going to have complete system failures all the time, kernel panics, whatnot, driver issues, video driver issues. You know, I would think OpenSUSE uh, would hold packages back just enough to make sure that there are no major breakages. Unlike something, you know, like Gen 2 or something that's Gen 2 based or, or Arch, uh, you know, you can get some, some major breakages on those systems. Hopefully, OpenSUSE's Tumbleweed is a little more stable, a little more reliable than those, but we'll see. I'm going to run it for a few months in a virtual machine. I'm going to keep it updated and play around in it, you know. And uh, if I experience any stability or reliability issues or any major breakages, I'll definitely let you guys know. I'll keep you informed. Peace, guys.